Good morning, Burley Glenwood boys and girls. This is a video for area lesson 14.2 and you should be watching this on Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm going to share my screen so we can get right to it. Hopefully you have already pulled up your digital common core that goes with this lesson. If you have not already done so, please do so now. I'm going to make it a little bigger because that's it's not taking up much of the screen there. there we go. And we are also going to be using some digital um, slides that I have made to go with this lesson. So number one, the Johnson's backyard is shaped like a parallelogram. What is the perimeter of the Johnson's backyard? So your first step in that one is to finish labeling all the sides and then you want to add them up. Number two, Bonnie walked 310 meters to the park and 420 meters to the store. How many meters did Bonnie walk in all? So you want to take note of what your important numbers are for that. You have 310 and you have 420. And they do say in all, so that lets you know what operation you need to do. So on your paper, there should be something for your digital common core that says show work here. Please stack them and do the correct operation. Number three, which of the following is the name for a five-sided shape? So you have to decide, is a five-sided shape a pentagon, hexagon, five-gon, or a quadrilateral. Number four, what are the next two numbers in the pattern below? 12, 19, 26, 33. So I notice that in the tens place it goes one, one, two, three. So I don't see a definitive pattern there. In my ones place, two, nine, six, three. So Two to nine, that's seven. Six to three, that's three. That's not a definitive pattern. Well, let's look and see what the difference is between 12 and 19. That's a difference of seven. Now I'm going to grab 19 and add on seven and see if it gets me a 26. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Oop, that got me seven. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab 26 and count on to 33 and see if, again, it, it has a. Um, difference of seven. So 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Oops, see a difference of seven again. So it seems to be counting up by seven. So apply that pattern and figure out what the next two numbers are. Write a fact family for eight and 64. You need a multiplication equation and you need a division equation. You need two equations for that one. Numbers six and seven. Marcy makes $24 a week landscaping. How much does Marcy make in three weeks? So please um, solve that one. Please also show the equation that you use to find your um, answer. How many weeks would it take for Marcy to make $48? Um, you can show an equation on that one also. You could think of that as repeated addition, or you could think of that one as multiplication in order to figure out how long it would take for her to make $48. Okay, number eight, draw two polygons, explain how they are different and how they are alike. So um, I'm going to see if I can open that up real quick because last time I wanted people to draw shapes, they did not, well, about half the people drew the shapes and half did not. So, whoops, I need this to shrink. And go into my Google thingy. So this is 14.2. <clears throat> 14.1. eleven. as you can see, Mrs. Mears has been busy. I'm going to zoom in and show you what you should be seeing on your own. So if you'll notice over here, this is the hint for how you get 
Hello. For how you get shapes, you want to come up here to your shapes tool. But I'm going to zoom in so that you can see it bigger. So 100%. We need two polygons. So you'll go to the shapes spot and select shapes. It just wants polygons. So you can get creative. You could do a square and a triangle. You could do a rhombus and a trapezoid. You could do pentagon, hexagon, octagon. It's your choice. You're picking two shapes. Then, after you've drawn your two shapes, you need to finish these statements. They are different because don't make one of them purple and one of them pink and say they're different because they have different colors. That's not what we care about. We care about how many sides they have. We care about their angles. We care about their vertices. So you need to use mathematical terminology when you're explaining how they're different and how they're the same, whether they all have the same side length, whether opposite sides are equal and parallel. So make sure that you're specific and that whatever you say there has to do with the shapes that you pick. Don't say something that doesn't apply to your shape. So let's go back to the smart point thing now. Okay, so that was for that. Now, if I'd have had a brain, I'd have remembered it's time for the video. So let's go find the video. Are you the video? No, you are not the video. You are though. And we'll scroll down so we can hit the play button. And we need to activate the computer sound. What types of units describe area? Tran wants to make a bookmark for a paperback book. He wants his bookmark to have an area of 20 square units. What is a square unit? A square unit is a square with sides that are each one unit long. Should he use square centimeters or square inches as a unit? What are you measuring when you measure area? Okay, I'm going to replay that since my dog was naughty and wanted to bark. <clears throat> A square unit is a square with sides that are each one unit long. Should he use square centimeters or square inches as a unit? What are you measuring when you measure area? I apologize for my dog. When you measure area, you're measuring the amount of surface covered. First, try using a unit of one inch. Each square is equal to one square inch. Tran wants his bookmark to have an area of 20 square units. The unit can be a square that has a length of one inch on each side. Why is the unit called a square inch? Because each side of the square measures one inch long. If he uses an inch as a square unit, how big would Tran's bookmark be? The area would be 20 square inches. Would 20 square inches be a good size for a bookmark? That seems too large. Try a smaller square unit. The unit can be a square that has a length of one centimeter on each side. If Tran uses a centimeter as a square unit, his bookmark would be 20 square centimeters. That seems more reasonable. Tran should use square centimeters as a unit. Okay, so my smart board, I have this set up. I set up some paper for you guys. So we are going to go into Google and I set up some paper. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Yes. So I set up some stuff for you. So I am gonna make this big so it takes up the full screen. 
<clears throat> then I'm gonna zoom in. Where's my plus button? There it is. So you can pull yours up and do it alongside the video. Just make the video on one half of your screen and have this be on the other. So it says on your grid paper, create a region that has an area of 18 square inches. Um, it doesn't say it has to be a rectangle. It could be a little funky. Um, it might be tricky to do stair steps. You would have to do some copy paste and have several um, shapes next to each other. The thing is not long enough to do a one by 18. So you cannot do one by 18 because if I try to do that, the biggest I could make is a one by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Biggest I can do is a one by eight. Then if I try to go this way, and do a two by, well, two by eight is 16. It is not quite big enough. So, well, what happens if I do a three by? Three by eight, that's 24. I've made it too big. So let's shrink it and see what happens. Let's make it smaller. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, so it's too small. Let's make it a little bigger. So I was at 12, 13, 14, 15. Ooh, I'm almost there. 16, 17, 18. That works. Is a three by six the only way I could do it? No. Not sure how long I made this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I did not make it long enough. If I had made your paper long enough, you could have done a two by nine, but I didn't make your paper long enough. If you wanna get creative and um, have part of your shape be something like that, and then Control C, Control B, and then bring something over and do something like that. Let's see what we've got now. So here was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, that's too big. So I could do something like that. And I have a shape that has an area of 18 square inches. So you can experiment and you can play with this and you can come up with your own shape that has an area of 18 square inches. The yellow, is already pre-programmed onto your slide. So I am gonna delete that and get rid of it. That way I don't have to delete it later for you guys. There we go. Okay, now we're going to the next slide. So it says, use tools, use a ruler to draw. So originally when I would have done this on the smart board and when we'd have done it in the classroom, we would have all had rulers. Well, I don't expect every family out in internet land to have rulers to use. So I pre-plugged some paper in for you. So what I want you to do is go back to here and do a control C. And now come here and do a control V. And that brings our shape with us. And we want it to be one square centimeter. My intention, this is centimeter paper, it was at least it was supposed to be. I want you to plop on here so that you have one square centimeter. Okay, I'm gonna move it off to the side. I'm gonna do a control C, a control V. Now on number two, we want one square inch. Well, you'll notice the inch squares are significantly larger than the centimeter squares. So you want, oh good, I have some people fixing their work. You want one square inch. Does it matter which square inch you pick? No, if you're like, I don't like that guy, you could put it here. If you're like, well, I like to be on the right, then put it there. 
it's up to you where you plop it, but you want one square inch. So I'm gonna shrink that guy down now. Okay, now down here for number three, it says draw a square. You have to make sure it's a square. It cannot be a rectangle. It cannot be a triangle. It needs to be a square with sides that are each two centimeters long. So I'm gonna go grab this guy, control C and B. So right now, I have a square, but are my sides two centimeters long? No. So I need my sides to be bigger. Now, if when you're grabbing this, if you grab it in the corner, you can stretch both sides at the same time. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm stretching it. Now, each side is two centimeters long. What is the area? I need to count my space inside the shape. Inside. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go grab a text box. And my area is four square. And then CM is the abbreviation four square centimeters. So on yours, please type four square centimeters. Now I'm going to move it over here and I'm just going to write type here. That way it's waiting for you. And then once you've typed, please move it into the center so we can see your work. Okay, number four. Which of these shapes has an area of five square centimeters? How do you know? So I'm going to go up and I am going to grab a circle. And I'm going to make it nice and big. Now I don't, I'm going to have, what color do I feel like today? Let's go with green. There we go. There's green. I'm going to make it bigger though. Oh, there's a nice big circle. Now I want the inside empty. I want it transparent so that when I move it on top, I can still see. So would this one be five square centimeters? Or would this one be five square centimeters? So I'm gonna move it off to the side. Now you'll notice this is showing me what a square centimeter is. You have to decide, is this a square centimeter? Or is this a square centimeter? And then I want you to slide the oval onto which one it belongs to. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is Monday's work along with the CCR. So you can pause the video now and come back to it tomorrow. I'm gonna keep working and show you what Thursday's work is. Okay, I gotta scroll up a little bit. Use the ruler. So remember, we're not using the ruler. We are using those lovely shapes that, okay, Ooh, there he is. Yay, hello, shape. So I'm gonna use this little guy. Yay, he still fits. And I need a figure with an area of six. It is your choice whether you go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whether you do a shape like that or whether you choose to go two, four, six. You can do something a little funky monkey, but it has to be a contiguous shape. You can't like go one here, one here, one here, one here. You can't be all wacky doodle. It has to be within itself. But you could, if you're creative, you could do something like an L or something. But it has to have six square centimeters. Okay, number seven, you need a figure with an area of six square inches. So I'm gonna start with that guy as my starting point. And right now I've got two square inches, three square inches, four, five, six square inches, okay? Does your shape have to be that one? No, you could have, let me see if I can twirl it. Yeah. There we go. You could have done a shape more like that. That's up to you. I did not make it um, big enough 
so that you could have a one by six. That was not done. So I'm gonna start with that guy small, get this guy back to its starting point. So it's ready and it's there for you. Now, number eight, Mitch drew a pattern on a piece of paper shown below. What is the area of his drawing in square units? This one you can solve two different ways. You can touch and count, just touch each one and count it. Or you can think of it as a multiplication array, three rows of what? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is three rows of seven? So I'm gonna insert a text box so that you can type the answer. So blank units. I'll do it as square units. So I want you to fill in the blank. Okay, nine and 10, use the picture at the right. Okay, so this is kind of hard to see. I'm gonna zoom in a little more, see if it'll look a little better. See, ooh, there we go, that's better. Suppose each square in the picture represents one square centimeter. That means each of these little guys. So one, two, three, four, five. That's a five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a um, eight by five, five by eight, depending on how you think of it. This one looks like it's a four by four. Oh, this one's not very wide. So this one's four, um, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this one's a four by nine. So suppose each square in the picture represents one square centimeter. What is the area of the blue shape? So insert text box. Blue shape. And that would be square centimeters. So you need to count how many spaces are in there and put it in the blank. Remember, it was a one, two, three, four, five. I believe it was a five by eight. So you could count by fives eight times to figure that out. Okay, number 10. Maggie thinks that the area of the two, okay, let's read that again. Maggie thinks that the area of two of the orange shapes is equal to the area of one of the green shapes. So I'm gonna borrow this. Control C, V, explain. So orange shape, we need to start with that. And it's a four by four. Four times four equals, hopefully you just went, ooh, that's 16, Mrs. Mears. So I'm gonna put 16 there. Then it says two of them. So two oranges. Well, orange shapes. And 16 plus 16 is, hopefully you went, ooh, that's 32. Now we had a four by, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see, let's go back to that. So green shape, four times nine equals. Maggie thinks that the area of two of the orange shapes is equal to the area of one of the green shapes. Do you agree? Explain.
you're either going to say I agree or I disagree because and I need you to fill in the because. Oopsie. There we go. I'm going to leave this part for you and you can fill that in. I'm not going to delete that. Number 11, Yasmin is buying letter beads to make a bracelet that spells her name. The beads cost eight cents each. How much money does Yasmin need to buy the beads? Okay, well, if this was regular smart board, I could highlight right on it, but I don't think I can do that. So the beads cost eight cents each. So I am gonna grab a text box and get started. So I have eight cents times equals, you have to figure that out. Now in this spot, you want to count up how many letters she has in her name. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I count that right? Yep, seven. So you're gonna put a seven there. And then I'm going to write cents. Then you have to multiply it and figure out how many cents that would be. Okay, number 12, persevere. There were 24 grapes in a dish. Luke ate six grapes. Juan ate half the grapes that were left. Then Luke ate all but two of the remaining grapes. Who ate the most grapes? One has a lot of grapes going on. Okay. I'm going to switch back to the smart board because this is one where I'd really like to draw a picture and I have not figured out how to draw in um, Google Slides. So I'm going back to the smart board for this one. So. There we go. So I'm going to start with 24 grapes. So let's come down here. And we'll do smiley faces as grapes. So 24 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Four. Okay, there's my 24 grapes. I'm going back to a pointer. So I have taken care of the first step. There were 24 grapes in a dish. Luke ate six grapes. Okay, Luke's coming along and he is decimating six of the grapes. Okay, they go bye bye. Bye bye. Juan ate half the grapes that were left. Well, good for him. Okay, so I am looking at this chunk that's left and going, oh, I can cut that in half. Juan came along and ate half. These are now gone. Juan made a pig of himself. Okay, now I got Luke coming along and he's hungry still. So Luke is going to eat all but two of the remaining grapes. So I have to get rid of all but two. Oh, I think I'll go back to pink because then it might be easier to see. So let's make that pink. There we go. Luke ate all but two of the remaining grapes. So he's eating those and he's eating those and he's eating all but two. So I'm going to leave those. So. so I need to figure out how many were the pink. And how many were the blue? So it looks like for blue, I have like a three by three array. So three, six, nine. So one, eight, nine. Luke, I think Luke, I think you were pig. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So who ate the most grapes? Luke.
So this is one, I'm sure there's some sort of equation way that could have been solved. But at this stage of third grade, I would expect most of us to want to draw a picture like I just modeled. So I am going to go back to um, the other version. Is that what I want? Yeah. Okay. Number 13, a rectangle has an area of 40 square centimeters. So I am going to draw a rectangle. One side is eight. So I'm going to insert a text box and label it eight centimeters. There we go. No. So you could be. Now it said the whole thing is 40. There's a special little button. I'm not sure if I can do it, but I'm going to see. Hello, trying to do you. I know how to do it in a different form format, but I don't know how to do it in Google. Huh. Oh, well, I'll just say, just go like that. So we know centimeters squared. I was trying to make it have that little two above it, but it wasn't working. So when I have a problem like this, I need to think square centimeters. I can think how many times would I count by eight to get to 40. So I can think of it as repeated addition and what's a more efficient operation to use in repeated addition. Hopefully you're thinking multiplication. So eight times what is 40? So you need to figure out what the other side is. What is the missing side going to be? And then label it. So hopefully you watched how I did all of that because I want you to make this shape. And I, so I'm going to get rid of all that stuff and we're going to see who's savvy, who's been paying attention, and who's not. Okay, now that's the last one that I put in this version. So we are going to go back to the quick check now. So hopefully you're going to pull up the digital quick check while you're watching the video and listen to the hints that I give you. Which shape has the greatest area? I'm going to see if I can zoom in a hair. Let me move my picture out of the way. Zoom in. This is a three by one, two, three, four, five. So you can think of what is three times five. This one is a three times three or three by three. This one is three by four. So what is three times four? This one is a four by four. So take a moment, multiply out those numbers that I just mentioned to figure out which one has the largest area. Okay, number two, what is the area of this shape? This one, you can just touch and count. Touch and count, and you're deciding is it five square inches? So pay attention to what the key says. Five square centimeters, six square inches, or six square centimeters. So pay attention to the key on that one. It'd be really easy to pick the wrong one. Number three, Diego is making party invitations. Each invitation card should have an area of 24 square units. Which is the best unit to use? So you think back to the video do you think 
um, if he's making an invitation card, and a card's not going to be super big. I don't think I have it. Ooh, here we go. Let's see what this is. So here we have something in a card. It's not huge. You can see it next to my head. Do you think this is in square centimeters, square feet, square inches, or square yards? And if you're like, I don't know what a yard is, I have a yardstick in here. I'll bring it over and show you. Okay, so this is actually a yardstick yardstick. Okay, so we can see. It is. 36 inches long. It is really long. And it came from Lowe's. So, and um, so you have to think is this in square yards? Think of the yardstick. It's really big. Or could it be in square inches? So, like, here's an inch. I'll put my thing next to it. I don't have a, a ruler with centimeters in here, so I can't show you that one. Um, in square feet, a foot is 12 inches, so a foot would be from here to where this hand is. Okay, on to number four. What is the area of this shape? So look at our unit. Count how many are inside. Is that two square inches, two square centimeters, four square inches, or four square centimeters? And last one. Constantina is cutting paper to make a cover for her notebook. She wants the cover to have an area of fifth square units. Which is the best unit for her to use? So first one talks about square meters. A meter is a little bit bigger than this yardstick. So would she use square meters? Okay. Now then our next one is square inches. So here is one inch. So you have to, ooh, because I almost knocked my water off. Would she use 15 inches that were that size? Would she use 15 square feet to cover a notebook? So that would be 15 squares that were that long. Or would she use 15 square centimeters? Now a centimeter is about as wide as your pinky is. So do you think she would use a square that was 15 pinkies wide and 15 pinkies tall? Well, there'd be 15 of those little pinkies. So you have to decide if she's covering a notebook, what would be the best unit to use? Oh, that was all of them. That went fast. And hopefully you do better than I do because I did not give you any freebie answers and I got zero on it. So, and I am hoping good I did. So ladies and gentlemen, I am gonna stop the share on the video. I'm hoping that you are going to have, oopsie, I clicked the wrong button. There we go. So ladies and gentlemen, this was Wednesday and Thursday's lesson. Hopefully you followed along in the video and thought the um, Google slide thing I made worked well. I'm gonna do that for this whole topic where I can because um, other in the classroom, we'd be handing out graph paper for you to draw on and this is as close as we can get to handing you guys graph paper. Hope you have a lovely day and 14.3 will be posted for Friday.